What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you a fantastic new app from NVIDIA. It's the NVIDIA app. Yeah, exciting name, but it actually does have some super exciting features. This is a replacement, currently still in beta, for the old and outdated NVIDIA control panel and the clunky, difficult to use NVIDIA GeForce experience. Not only does it get rid of the need to have an NVIDIA account to update your graphics driver like you do in GeForce experience, but it's also porting across tons of settings from the old NVIDIA control panel app that's just difficult and really slow to use. In order to download this, head across to the link in the description down below and choose download beta. Simply open the installer when it's done downloading and you'll see it here. And I'll choose upgrade here in order to install it. This upgrades GeForce experience to the new app and transfers your preferences. If you haven't already used the GeForce experience app, then this option may not be provided to you. I'll click upgrade, agree and continue, and the installation process will begin. When it starts up for the first time, you'll be prompted whether you want the game ready driver for gamers or the NVIDIA Studio driver, which is supposed to be more stable for video creators, animators, etc. I'll be using the latest game ready driver, choose next, and we can choose to automatically optimize all of our games, much like the GeForce experience. I'll be skipping this. Then the NVIDIA overlay is brand new and comes with two brand new RTX features that are actually super exciting. We can use Alt Z to open this in game and I'll show you that in just a bit. Exclusive rewards is the only thing in this app that requires you to log in. However, you can skip this just like that. We have access to update our drivers on the driver tab and many more things. Obviously the home tab lets you go to the different games in your library, which you'll also find under the graphics section, as well as some news slash other apps from NVIDIA themselves. The drivers tab lets you update your graphics driver and in the top right, you can choose the drop down where you can swap between game ready and studio driver, as well as see what's new between your version and the newest graphics driver, see what's fixed, etc. This is super useful. Then on the graphics tab, we have all of our games and customization settings, etc., which you previously saw in the NVIDIA control panel and sort of split between the GeForce force experience too. Now it's all in one place. They're still moving settings across, mostly from the old control panel, but most of them are still here and some of them won't be moved across at all as they're deprecated and super old. If I pull up the NVIDIA control panel, which you'll still have installed when you install this new NVIDIA app beta, you'll see just how long it takes to change between tabs here, especially when you're loading lots of things such as all of the games on the list here, etc. Most of these settings here you'll already find in this section here and we can control it super easily. And on the global settings tab, you can change all of these options which apply to all of your games unless you set different options here first. You'll see over here in the global settings tab, we have RTX HDR and RTX Dynamic Vibrance. These are the two brand new options. Although you'll need to update your graphics driver if they're grayed out for you. So I'll need to do that first. We can change our frame rate, but that's pretty much it. Previously in the control panel, you'll see a change resolution tab where you can choose a frame rate, resolution, etc. This hasn't been ported across to the NVIDIA app just yet, as well as a few other settings like G-Sync, etc. For those, you'll still need to open up the old control panel, but it's exciting when they get put in this app because when you look at that, it's instant to change tabs. And obviously it's super nice to have the ability to toggle our overlay here in these settings as such, as previously that was on the experience app and not in the actual control panel app. Things were split up weirdly, at least here, they're planned to all be unified in one super simple place. As previously mentioned, the only tab that requires you to log in is the redeem tab, and that's only if you want any of these things here. When you buy an NVIDIA graphics card, etc., in the future, and you get a redeem code, punch it in here, redeem, and things should work. At least that's what I get from how they explain things. Currently, there's only promotion with Call of Duty that lets you get an extra XP and weapon XP when you choose to redeem it here and sign in with your NVIDIA account. Finally, the settings tab gives you a bit of information about your system. Scrolling down, we can toggle our NVIDIA overlay, game game filters and photo mode, choose whether to automatically download drivers and scan for apps if for some reason it hasn't automatically scanned and checked, you can also view and modify locations so it searches different folders for all of your games. It can automatically add and optimize new games as well, if that's something you want, and we can open the old NVIDIA control panel from the very bottom here. On the notifications tab, we get driver updates and available rewards, and finally about just gives you a bit of information about this program, as well as turning on access to early builds, which is even more cutting edge than just the beta. You can also choose to automatically upload error and crash 
mesh data to help improve this program. And by default, configuration, performance, and usage data is all being sent to NVIDIA for this app here, which you can toggle off at any time here as well. So let's go ahead and see what's new. Obviously first, I'll need to update my graphics driver. And there we go, the driver's up to date. I'll close this and on the graphics tab, global settings, I think I need to restart this first. I can turn on RDX dynamic vibrance for all games. And I forget what the other one is, but it's not here. I think I need an HDR display for that, which I do have, but of course I won't be able to show you properly on YouTube as this video is not HDR. Anyways, let's find out what the new overlay has to offer. There we go. It gave me a pop-up saying Alt Z to open up the new overlay. So that's exactly what we'll do. Alt Z pulls up this brand new overlay. We've got gallery for recorded clips from Shadowplay, etc. We have a record option, which is Alt F9 by default. Nothing too crazy here. And when we stop recording, it should show up in my gallery right over here, where we can see highlights, recordings, replays, screenshots, etc. Instant replay is currently turned off for me, but I can turn it on and hitting Alt Shift F10 saves the last however many seconds we have set here. Not too much has changed with shadow play for the most part, but what is new is that they'll be adding AV1 support for shadow play really soon. You can get early access as far as I understand through this NVIDIA app. Screenshots, photo mode, etc. are all pretty much the same as before, although we need a supported game to use photo mode or Ansel. Highlights, obviously the same. I've got them enabled currently and if I'm playing a supported game, I'll see clips, etc. here. But finally, game filters. If we click this or choose Alt and F3, it pulls up this panel over here. Why mass acceleration is on all of a sudden, I have no idea. It's not on when I'm in game. Anyways, the game filter tab will have three different profiles and none to choose from a bunch of effects, but it seems like none are supported in CS. Okay, I'll hop into a game that everyone knows, which is Power World, of course, and using Alt Z once more, game filters, now we have the options available here. Okay, so obviously we have depth of field and things like that, which allow us to customize how our game looks, etc. But what I'm really interested in here is the brand new RTX Dynamic Vibrance. This option allows us to automatically boost saturation, etc. while we're in game, and it seems to require a restart. Okay, let me quickly restart Power World. Immediately, I can see the main menu is a lot brighter, and getting into the game, the time of day and my play model have changed. I think I selected the wrong save, but uh, let's stand somewhere with a whole bunch of color. It seems good enough. Maybe here. Yeah. Okay, we got some greens, we got some oranges, etc. Alt Z, game filters, RTX dynamic vibrance. We can crank down the intensity and crank it up. Obviously, you can see exactly what it does. It changes the vibrance, makes it a whole lot more colorful, as well as saturated if you choose to do this as well. Obviously, you won't have it so crazy, but this over here is using AI rather than just changing vibrance and stuff like that. So it should look a lot better than the old usual vibrant slider. And on top of this, RTX HDR should be here as well, I think. Maybe we need to enable that in the settings panel if you have an HDR display. That should allow the game to automatically be converted from SDR, which is standard dynamic range, into HDR, so brighter brights are brighter and darker darks are darker. Obviously, it's very similar to the auto HDR built into Windows, but it's supposed to be infinitely better. But for the most part, this brand new overlay here has had huge improvements and of course the two new RTX features. But there's one more super interesting thing, which is the statistics, which we can toggle with Alt and R. If I turn it on, you'll see a brand new way of displaying things. It's in white text, which doesn't help much. We'll configure where we can move it around very easily, vertically and horizontally, as well as change the visibility to add a background with enhanced. This is completely different to what it was previously. I don't think there's any new options here, but it should have status indicators for different things that are happening, as well as this new and improved section where we can also head back and change it from basic to advanced for tons of extra info. And finally, custom, where we can choose exactly what we want and how. There's a ton of different options in here that you can show all in one go. And I would assume that this should work in something like Counter-Strike. None of these are working at the bottom, not too sure why. As it's not really an in-game overlay, I think it should work there too. I'll have to have a look. But this should offer more info in a much more readable way. Also, I can change it from linear to double or even stacked if you want tons of info in a nice small block in the corner. You can disable the enhanced view and it gets rid of the background, bigger text, etc. 
super useful, and I'm super happy that they added a much more detailed overlay, which should help tons of gamers, especially if they don't have something like River Tuner installed with MSI Afterburner, etc. This is super useful. But anyways, I'm pretty sure we ran through everything in the overlay, and almost everything in the NVIDIA app. The only thing was RTX HDR, which isn't here currently, as I don't have HDR mode enabled. So in my Windows settings, I'll enable HDR here, which I do have an HDR monitor, and after it thinks about everything, there we go, HDR should be enabled. I'll restart the app. I don't actually see what this option is. Hmm, I swear it was there before, but anyways, I assume if you install this with an HDR monitor enabled or set up, it should be somewhere here. But anyways, you get the point. That is the brand new NVIDIA app. It's still in beta, so things are improving, but it's definitely a huge step above what we had before, and I can't wait to get rid of this old Windows XP-esque NVIDIA control panel. It's about time. Hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.